did um, two whole cars. It was me, Dez, and me three, right? And on the first car, in small letters, it said, all you see is, and then, you know, big, big, you know, black silver letters that said, crime in the city. At the Grand Concourse, 149th Street Station in the Bronx, graffiti writers gather at what they call the writer's bench. Another episode live from the writer's bench. I'm your man Kill with my man Bezo and Ev. What's good, fellas? Peace, peace. Oh, still missing my soldier Vic, but had to finish part two of our five slept on albums that are classics to us. So far, we had Ev hitting us in the head with part one with Wyclef's The Carnival Joint. We had Bezo hitting us with the Diamond D Joint, Stunts, Blunts, and Hip Hop. We had me hitting you on the head with the Master Ace take a look around joint then Ev hit us back with the black moon to enter the stage joint and then Bezo hit us would you hit us with Bezo? Uh, Molly Maul in Control was Molly Maul in Control then I came back with the Dumb by the Forces of Nature's by the Jungle Brothers Ev hit us with the Dares of Dark Side Red Man's second album and then Bezo hit us with the Ghost Dini Ghost Dini <laughs> <laughs> with the Ghost Dini joint Ghost Face Killer so we up for my third joint. This is a personal favorite, personal classic. I've never heard anybody ever talk about this in the classic realms, but to me, this album not so much. The Beat Nuts first album. Not the EP with Rain of the Tech, but I'm talking about the first album with Are You Ready, Props Over Here, Super Bad, Straight Jacket, Let Off a Couple, Reach Joint, Fried Chicken, Yeah, You Get Props, Hit Me With That, Lick the, you know what I mean? And, and and the craziest thing about this album, this album dropped in, um, God, what year did this album drop? I can't even find it on here. This album dropped in 94. And I'll never forget, yeah. it was one of them summers, I used to come home from Morgan every summer back to Philly. And at the time, me and my man Rollo, who's cat from Baltimore, were making beats together. And um, I just listen to this album every day, all summer. And as much as I love Primo and Pete, um, this album, like how you were saying Ev, about Into the Stage made you want to rhyme, this album really made me want to really be a producer. I always had that love and that, that oomph for it, but this album right here made me want to be a, a, a hip hop producer. I mean, there was no other album that just solidified it for me more than this joint. So. The Beat Nuts, they first album. What, what y'all think about that joint? Yeah, I mean, this is the, this is the uh, what's the name of the album? It's just the Beat Nuts. The Beat Nuts, all right, ninety four, yeah. right? Ninety four. Right. What was you about to say, Big? I was gonna say like I, I feel you one hundred percent, dudes. I think we we talked a little bit about these cats, me and you, kill a couple weeks ago, and I was saying how like hip hop nowadays. That's the problem with it being so. Popish, being so much about pop music that there's no place in the market, in the real market, for cats like the Beat Nuts, the Alcoholics, you know these dudes that. Because one thing you got to say about the Beat Nuts, yo, know, every album they drop, there's at least not one but two classics on every single album. Not just some nice song, not some dope, but I mean straight classics, yo. Where you like, I mean it would get radio rotation at least up here in this area when it would drop. And that first album, yo, Psycho Les and Juju, man, them dudes is crazy, man. And they, and they both good people. I mean, I used to, I used to mess with Les a little bit out here, go through his crib, let me hear some, some beats. I play him some beats. He's just a real good dude. He wild, but he's a real good dude, man. They, they just, I, I talked about it with him, like, you know, what his methodology is, to just making beats, and he just like, yo, whatever's hot. <laughs> it's like that was his whole answer, like, if it sound dope, it just sound dope, and I'ma rock with it. Like, right. okay, <laughs> that's a good formula, you know what I mean? There's nothing, nothing too deep about it, just find dope samples and make some dope beats and spit over that joint. Right, right. They, they rock, man. That album is a perfect example of that quality of it. Man. Yeah, I mean, like I said, I, this is one of them albums I could start with. You don't stop and just ride all the way through, man. You know what I mean? This literally was 
again, I keep saying it was the soundtrack to, to that summer of 94 for me, man. You know, had me coming back. And that's probably around the time when I met you and started getting with Sean Roots and y'all on the beats and, and everything, too, like after coming back from this album. So what you what you say, Ev? Did you, you don't really actually, rock with the nuts like that, actually, right? Actually, I was, like I was going to say, I, I wasn't the, the biggest Beat Nuts fan. Not that I was like, I hated them. I just, I didn't never really buy the albums like that. So I knew the singles that they came out, but I never really like sat and listened to a whole Beat Nuts album. I had peoples that did. They were big Beat Nuts fans, but the Beat Nuts never really like, they, they never really like caught my ear that much. But I know since we've been doing this show, honestly, like we've been had a lot of conversations where the Beat Nuts have come up and come up in, in, in the conversation itself. I need to check them out more. You know, this, yeah. this actual show is actually, I need to go back and really like kind of check some of these things that I missed because I'm looking at the list now and I know some of these singles, but I never listened to the whole album. Right. So I got some homework to do. Yeah, B, I'm telling you, this nuts joint, and I know from the last show, show a couple of, you know, a minute ago, y'all was a big Grand Pooba fan. Grand Pooba was on this album. You know what I'm saying? So, you know, okay. I know Pooba got the, got the, y'all kicked my man Rick to the curb for Pooba. So, you know, <laughs> if, if for no other reason than that, Ev, you should like this album. <laughs> so, but yeah, the Beat Nuts, the first joint, crazy album, love it to death, big. So what's good with you, Ab? What's your what's your next joint up the back? My next joint up the back. Um, I had to kind of pick and choose. I had a couple of them, but the one I'm gonna go with is Organized Last Organized Confusion's last album they did together, which was called Equinox. Yeah. Um, we combo about this a little bit last. Yeah, week. we talked about this a little bit last week. <laughs> um, this honestly was. I mean, I love this album so much, man. I went and found the vinyl. Um, I got blessed like maybe like two months ago and was able to meet Prince Poe and he saw my joint. That was it was like me it was monumental because I was like, Yo, this is this was definitely a classic album for me. Um, the reason why I like this album so much is because it wasn't it, it was a it was one of them, you know times when people were doing like themes, so the whole album had a whole like storyline type of thing. I will say the storyline wasn't. It, it was good until it got to the end. When it got to the end, honestly, it got kind of confusing. Like, wait a minute, what kind of happened with the story? But I think just the whole concept of the story, like what the story was about, um, it touched on topics that we've talked about, like, you know, this cat who's basically involved with the wrong crowd and going through this whole process and just like what goes on in the hood and this, this and that. But it was, it was definitely like a, a banger. To me, it was a banger all the way through. Actually, I'm, I'm looking at it and I'm like, y'all need to... It's funny because this show actually, actually, even stuff that it was classics for me, I haven't listened to in a while. And I'm like, yo, as soon as we get off this joint, man, I think I might put this one on because this one, like everything from Sound Man. I was about to say questions. And Sound and Man, Nine Times Out of Ten. Sin. Vitro. Oh, my goodness. Somehow, Number. some way. Yeah, man. Exactly. Exactly. Um, Hate. This was like really a classic, classic, well done project. And I like it so much because I'm a big Pharrell fan, but on this album, you know. Oh, Bezo knows. Bezo knows you're a big Pharrell. <laughs> That's Bezo right. Bezo knows how we get down with Pharrell around here. That was one of my favorites. Don't get me wrong. I got mad love for him. But on this I, one, man. I'm going to have to say, though, I, I didn't like that album at all, man. Oh, wow. man. Like Come on. Here, here we go with the controversy. I mean, now we thought of me, like I mentioned before, about like the album artwork stuff has always been a big part in in the culture for me, and and as much and, and it disappointed me was like I love the first joint, you know what I mean, with Fudge Pudge and all that stuff. I mean, I listened to that first OK, um, OK album from beginning to end easily. I mean, that's back when he's rocking tapes. I throw the tape in, let the let it flip, and just keep listening because it's just an incredible album. I would put, for me personally, I'd put that one more of a classic in terms of my heart than the second one. The second one, as soon as I saw the album cover, and I know when you hear them two cats spit, there's so much intellect in their lyrics, in depth and whatnot, and everything they say and whatnot, that when I saw the album cover, I was like, damn, y'all, I was expecting something deeper, like like what's his name's last album, um, last two albums. Um, Pharaoh's last two albums, you know, he had the thing where he's covering right. like the mummy mask. Right. Then the last one with the, you know, We Are War wearing the glass, you know. It's just, you look at that album, and you, the album cover, and it's a, it's a, it'll picture that, piques your interest. And I look at the album covers as 
the prelude to what music videos ended up becoming for Next Generation. For me, album covers are always part of what drew you into just how dope their creativity is as a group, as an artist, or whatever the case may be. Because even though they may not have the final say, depending on who the artist is, they will have some say on their album cover picture. And so I'm not sure that. So do you not like the album at all, or you didn't like it? I didn't. I mean, that, I'm just I'm going depth and deep about in depth about the um, album cover because it bothered me when I saw it, and then when I listened to the album, I I was hoping that I right, that's just the album cover, whatever, you know, it's still okay. Organized confusion. I said, okay, it's still okay. So I'm expecting some real monumental stuff, and then I found myself not giving. Not getting into a lot of the joints, man. I just the production on there, it just didn't do it for me. It, it made it hard for me to really rock with the whole album. There's a couple of joints that get me wrong that I that I did like a lot, but overall, like you said, kill about Marley's second album. That I was very disappointed when I heard that joint, man. It just it did nothing for me. I ain't gonna lie. It's, it's funny because actually, I mean, contrary, the, the album cover is one of the things I actually liked about it. Um, because it was simple, because it was just like basically one word. You know, as far as what the album itself was called, that's kind of like really what what kind of drew me. Because I mean, the first the first organized album I listened to it, I can't say that I was really into it as much um, as this one. Even though like the joint with Black Sunday, that was my that was my joint. Um, but this one I actually appreciated more because to me the lyrical ability, like what what between Pharaoh and Prince Poe, they was just like lyrically they were just killing it. Well, that's, um, that's one of their best attributes. I'm gonna cut you off, but the way that they the way they were intertwined their flow, yeah, man, it was it like, was. You hear well, well, two well, many dudes, and it's like one dude sounds like this, the other dude, but them two sounded like brothers in rap almost. You know what I mean? Where they, one guy sometimes is like the the deeper guy, and the other guy just spits. You know what I mean? But right, right, two right. both were intellectual and in they content. I mean, again, even taking all of what I'm saying, it still doesn't take away in my heart my love for for organized. I mean, them dudes. I look at them as one of the most slept on groups, without a doubt. But I just, it's just something about the album. Maybe it was the time. I don't remember what was out back then. But I, I was disappointed, man, when I heard that. Because I was looking at them to step up into the world of the top groups and top MCs at that time. With that, By that time, the album where it came on. Because I felt like too many people slept on or just never heard the first joint. So I was like, okay, now for the people that I've been talking about, okay, about now they're going to finally see what I'm talking about. And then when I heard that, I was like, damn, man, they let me down. <laughs> yeah, they, I mean, I definitely, I think it's definitely something different than the first one. But I think, you know, even on this joint, I think one of the, the greatest concept songs ever done, um, I believe is in vitro, whereas they basically, you know, you do a song from the aspect of an unborn child, um, which was like, you know, which was just dope. I mean, it just like, you know, just the, the thought pattern that they did, that they, that they took to actually get to this point to put this album together. I just think it was like really, I mean, it was very, very, definitely very, you know, probably, probably on the more like, you know, on more like, you know, logical side of things and just like really getting like real, like, you know, brainy with it. But um, yeah, I don't know. I think this joint, man, it just, it, it, it really like, it lived, I, I stayed with this album for a while. When I first listened to it, I, I stayed with this joint for a long time. Like I just kept running in rotation. Yeah, I think the funny thing too about this album for me is that when I first got it, I tried to listen to it while I was cleaning my crib. And it's like, you can't listen to Organized Confusion <laughs> while you're trying to clean your crib. Like, <laughs> no, organized Confusion is not background music at all. Nah, nah, you know? But um, I mean, I see what you mean because I, can say, I, I honestly can't say that the production to me wasn't stellar. Like, I wasn't blown away. Like I was saying about Farrell during our, um, the Battle of the Burrow joint is that Farrell is one of the few MCs who still commands my attention over subpar production, mm -hmm. you know? And 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 so I, I feel you. There, to me, there's not one beat on this album that's just crazy. You know, there's no fudge putts. There's no stress. There's no, there's no monumental beat on here. But like you just, like Farrell and Prince Poe together, just so... Yeah, I mean, that's I, I, I thought wish they would do an album together again, man, because they... Yeah, this no. play off of one another was incredible, man. Right, right. It might be, I mean, I might be going out on a limb by saying this, but I think it might have been some of the best back and forth for MCs since like one DMCs together forever. I mean, that was one of my favorite two MCs just rhyming, going back and forth. 
the way they did that, man, was just seamless. So every song they were on, I don't care how dope the beat was or wasn't, you could listen to them dudes, and they were almost like instruments themselves in the way they would go back and forth and their their styles and their, their level of intellect and in their rhymes. So it, again, for me, it was more about the production. And like right. I know, like Kill just said, I know you listening to them dudes, you're going to hear something worth listening to lyrically, without a doubt. They never let you down with that. Cool, cool. All right, B, what, what you got up next for bad? I was going, I had one in mind, but as we were sitting, getting ready for this, I was just going through my, my iTunes playlist and it hit me hard as I'm going through it because it just was so many songs. I mean, the whole album was there. But um, EPMD, man, Unfinished Business. Yeah. Oh. Now, which one was that, man? I get confused I'll with all the right now. So what you're saying, get the bowls at. Oh, yeah. Get my demo. Who's booty the big payback? Nick Nack, Caddy Whack. That's another dope. Going back and forth with them dudes. With uh, what's his name? Was that hey, Craig so. G? Who was there? Was another cat that was on that? Oh, man. K Solo was on it. K Solo. K Solo. That's what it was. K Solo. K Solo. And was it Red? Was Red on that? Yeah, on Red, Red didn't come around to the. Yeah, going. I think Red was around there. It was definitely K Solo. K Solo. Oh, okay. Yeah, it was definitely K Solo. But um, that album, yo, because again, you know, being an older head. Thinking back, that had to be, I want to say late 80s. That's like 89. Yeah, 88, 89, so maybe 90 at the most, but I think it was like 89. It was like 89. Because yeah, I wasn't even at Morgan yet, so I was still in New York. But it was like, for me, man, you know, them dudes coming out of Long Island. And again, from New York, that was always everybody's thing, being from New York. Like, like we did the show, you know what I mean, about each area in New York, you had that pride of, dope MCs, dope groups coming out of your, your neck of the woods or whatever. And it was almost like, damn, there's another cat from Long Island. We already got Rock Kim, you already got P.E. And now they got one of the illest rap duos in the game in EPMD, damn. Mm -hmm. And then, you know, listening to the production, it's classic old school hip hop with the hard drums and the samples and loops. And E, man, with his voice and the lisp and the slow talking. And then P, one thing I always liked about Parrish, I think he got better. He stepped up his game more and more lyrically. He got yeah. better as they progressed as a group. Mm -hmm. When he ventured out into his solo project after they had they fallen out, it sounded rust and a bit messy and whatnot. But that album, Unfinished Business, or was it Unfinished Business? I, mean, I might have just messed it up. No, it's Unfinished Business. Yeah, Unfinished Business. But that album for me, it just it just had a special place for me, man, because them dudes... That knickknack patty whack, whack, I must have rocked that for like months. Just that one song. And then I forget, like, oh my God, the big payback is off this out. You know what I mean? It's, and and um, so what you're saying, that was one of my favorites of all time right there. That's yeah, the that thing for me. Join, um, I used to love Total Chaos. I'm about to say Total Chaos. Yeah. Yeah. Total Chaos yeah, was crazy. This is my demo. I mean, come on, man. Yeah. But if he said holding up traffic on the FDR drive, so. <laughs> As a New York head, you could just, I could feel his pain because like the FTR Drive is one of the most crowded, wild highways in all of New York. The lanes are small. It's always rush hour on that joint. It hits the Brooklyn Bridge, Queens Bridge, the GW, every bridge in New York, the tri Bridge. So it's, it's mad congested. And to have your car break down on there, oh man, everybody's seen it. Everybody. You know what I mean? It's just like heartbreaking to hear their story. And it was a dope track, you know what I mean? That old, the old classic um, R&B joint that they used yeah. for. And I will say this, um, you know, Paul Abdul need to call EPMD and thank her because they shouted her out on this album when you had too much to drink. So, you know, <laughs> she, they helped introduce Paul Abdul to the hip hop nation. <laughs> that was the one joint on the album I couldn't stand though, dude. Yeah, it was crazy. I don't know yeah. what that was. It was crazy, but Wait, which I don't was know what part of the hip hop that was. Too much to drink, oh, and I like, crazy. I look like Paul Abdul. Yeah, it's time to party. It's funny because when I downloaded this, I remember when I downloaded, I was like, I'm gonna pay for this because this is EPMD. And um I'm like looking at it, it's like it's cheaper. Like each song was selling for like 49 cents or something like that. So I'm counting how many songs am I buying and what's the total purchase of the album. So I said, you know what? There's only two tracks on here I don't like, so I might as well just buy the whole album. And one of them was you had too much to drink. Yeah, I just don't know which phase of hip hop that was. Yeah, it was the house party. phase. Yeah, but yeah. I was saying, the party was the house joint, not oh, right. God. Right, right. Jungle right. Brothers in the you know the Jungle Brothers joint is the only house hip hop song I ever rocked to. Yo. 
Yeah, same here. I never, never like house music, period. So same here, same here. That, That's that what's classic for me, man. That holds a place in my heart, right there. All right, my next up to bat. I don't know if Cass got. I gotta bring this one up on the screen. The first priority basement flavor album. Y'all done got quiet on me again. Y'all have never seen this? No, I know you so I know it. I know it. I don't know it. I'd have to what what was some of the, the songs off of this? The biggest one off this joint was MC Light and Positive K's I'm not having. That's a dope song though. Oh, uh, that is a dope song. That was off this. Basically, um, you know, first priority, you know, was Light, Audio Two, Positive K, the Alliance. They had this other female MC. I think she was from Canada. Miss Miss she me. Miss she me. Yeah. Yeah. Oh. Yeah. 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 Oh, man, Mr. Rockwell, yeah. little song. That's right. Miss she me. Yeah. And um, oh. this was just a crazy album to me because this this is '88. I'm a, I'm a freshman in high school at Lincoln All. Ev. Me and Ev went to the same high school. We was two years behind me, but I was a freshman at this time, and I was running with my man Scoob, who was a junior who used to drive every day. He had this little Hyundai Excel joint. So, you know, you feel special, you a freshman, but you driving to school every day. And we used to bang this album constantly, man. I mean, looking back at it now, I can't say it's it's not a five mic classic or nothing like that because there are a lot of songs on here that I ain't even gonna hold you on some duds, but the joints that are on here, like MC Light joint on here, Survival of the Fittest. This was before it came out on the second Light album. That to me is one of the most vicious rhymes she ever kicked me. Can I sleep on MC Light, man? MC like, I'm telling y'all, this survival of the fittest joint. Oh, and this is the original. Like, the remix got put on the second Light album, but this joint was crazy. Audio 2 had the mini styles over the Freddy's Dead sample, the Curtis Mayfield joint. Just a dope album. I just I always love First Priority, man. Yeah, just what's, going, what's the Paz K joint over there? The, um, well, you got the Paz K and MC Light. I'm not having it. Then you got Positive K and this dude, Barsha, Impulse on 3. Those the only oh no, and Positive K and uh, Milk got a track called Tram. So wait, which one is that? The Paz K and um, MC Light joint is that the one they did the video for? Yeah, yeah. Okay, I'm not you happy. Know what? You know what? They filmed that joint in Vernon. I remember mm-hmm. I was there that day. The cat um Tuffy, he produced the cat. He's been in a couple of TV shows. He actually be, used to be on um. What's that show on HBO about uh, Making it in America, I think was the name of it? Yeah, 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 How to Make you know, it in America. You know, the Spanish cat that was uh, Pachanga from um, Carlito's Way. I, I don't yeah. know his name. He worked for what he was one of the dudes that was like his bodyguard, you know, hitman type dude. It's Cat Tuffy, and Tuffy used to do a lot of videos. He was from like the Bronx slash Mount Vernon. And I remember me and my man, so I'm out there with my man from, we used to dance for Brand Nubians and my man Floyd, and we just walking through the Vernon and we seen they was filming. So we stopped and was like, you know what's going on? And that was the first time I'd actually heard the song like that. Mm. Was seeing the video being shot. You know, they playing the music. She's in front of the spot. I like that scene where they're in the club and he's trying to step to her and all that. Right. I remember when the first time I saw it on Video Music Box, I'm like, oh, that's the joint. They, yo, this is crazy. And I always loved MC Light, so I felt bad that I didn't know that song before I saw the video. Like, damn. Yeah. I, I dope, dope album. Hard to find album on CD, too, because this sure. was back when cassettes was out. But dope album, man. Dope album. So, Ed, what you got up next for us, B? Uh, this is the this is a hard one. Um, is this the last one? No, nah, I mean we 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 got time. You go for another two. Okay, okay, okay. Well, for this one, I'm gonna go back to the to the infamous Ghost, Fish Scale. It's a classic album for me. Okay. Um, so I'm a, I'm a, I'm gonna advance up to the you know to the mid to mid to mid to late 2000s, but um, Fishgale man, it was it was a classic album man. That joint it hit me at the time I was living in LA and I had been out there for a while and of course it's a different environment than the environment that I'm used to. And I remember this album came out and I just it actually just helped ground me and kind of pull me back home a little bit. But outside of that, it was just a banger. It was, and honestly, I, and people will tell you, I, I wasn't always the biggest Ghostface fan, but Fishgale kind of just really like changed my opinion of the cat a little bit. I mean, don't get me wrong, I love the Supreme clientele and the Iron Man and all that, but Fishgale just like the Fishgale way that- Fishgale had Run on it, right? Yeah, 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 yeah. Run was on there. Um, let me see, what else? Uh, um, mm. 
Kilo is the measure. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Kilo was on it. That was yeah. crazy. Dude. That's oh, the album. Yeah. Crazy. Yo, Evans, that's the album where he um. That's one of the few, few Ghostface albums I didn't really, I didn't, I won't say I didn't like it, but it didn't. Man, what's up with you not liking my music, man? <laughs> <laughs> You ain't know my albums, kid. Yeah, no, no, you know, I, I, don't get me wrong. I, I rock with it because it's Ghostface, and I love Ghost, man. He's one of my favorite MCs, man. I love dude's style and the way he just don't, he don't care, man. He just, yeah, you know, yeah, yeah. Kid, like, love him, hate him. But it was so oh, like, my bad, my bad. You talking about Fish Scale. Fish Scale, yeah. yeah. I'm thinking the other joint. Kilo with Shaky Dog? Oh, man, Shaky Dog. Number one, the first joint that come on. That story. Shaky Dog. That joint is stupid. That's one of the most crazy. Yo, name, name some of the songs off of the album. You Shaky got Shaky Dog, Dog Kilo, uh, The Champ. The Champ. Yeah, that was my Dude uh, with Ghost that Pete did for them. Yeah. yeah. Uh, with a strap that Dilla did for them. Okay. Right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, what else? Big Girl. Um, Three Bricks. Three Bricks. That was my joint right there. Yeah, yeah. This, this is a. Yo, man. I mean, yeah, don't get me wrong. I love that album, but you gotta understand, Ghost has a lot of albums. There's only one joint on Big Door Rehab. It was the only Ghost joint that I. There was only like one or two songs that I messed with. Only joint I messed with that was the one with a uh, with a uh, uh, Beanie on it. On which one, Big Door? Uh, on on Big on uh, Big Door Rehab. The first yeah, that one. That one, that hey, Ghost was going in the place. Yeah, I, I wasn't. I wasn't too crazy for it. But now, don't get me wrong, Fisker. There was a few other joints in there I rock with too, but it's just the ones that Ghostface albums that I love. I mean, I just yo, I could rock them all day, every day, and be okay. You know what I'm saying? They they would feed my hip hop thirst like that. But yeah. that one just I don't know. I, I think Ghost was starting to go because Big Do uh, Big Do Rehab was I think the next one after that. I think yeah, Ghost, Big Do Rehab was after this one. Yeah, he was starting right. to go someplace where it seemed like he was trying to find himself a little bit. What with Fish Cow? I th- well, I think Fish Scale was like the start of him, because on Big Doe Rehab, I don't know if it was that one or Fish Scale. But he but had I, you know what it is? I, I think with Ghost, man, I think he, every other joint, he gives you like two sides, because Big Doe Rehab reminds me of um, Bulletproof Wallace, okay. and I wasn't a big fan of Bulletproof Wallace like that. Yeah, that was cool. It was, it was, um, it was cool. But Fish Scale, honestly, you know, it kind of reminded me of Supreme Clientele a little bit. I was um, play Supreme Clientele. You know, it remind me of that, but I, I, with Fishkill, I just, I don't know, I rock with Fishkill. The Supreme Clientele is the joint, but I rock with Fishkill more. It just, yo, man, I used to put this one in the car and just ride to this whole album. Yeah, I ain't mad at that joint. Oh, I ain't mad at that joint. I mean, so, B, what you got up next, B? What's that? What you got up next? Um, I'm going to have to go with Brand Newbie and, and God We Trust. And that was the um the first album after Puba was Solo. Right. And I was just Sada and Lord Jamal. And I remember there was a lot of fan, a lot of people at the time that I knew at least was wondering if they were going to be able to hold it down with that Poobah because, you know, there was a lot of cats that love Poobah. You know what I mean? Like me. You know what I'm saying? But, right. you know, Sada, I don't think you would ever look at as being the dopest MC, but he just, he kind of reminds me, like I said, about Ghost. That there's some rappers that, like James Brown wasn't the greatest singer, or Isaac Hayes, or Barry White. They didn't have the dopest voices, but they just knew their place, and they just had so much love for what they did that you had to respect them. Right. And that's how I always looked at Sadat and Jamal, for that matter. So I was, I was a little scared that it wasn't going to be on point. But then when you look at that album, I mean, they started with a long walk ball, you know, what I'm saying with the Muslim chant to prayer, you know, what I'm saying, or you know, a long walk ball, and then the beat drops and it was crazy. But the two hottest joints on that album that are classics, Love Me or Leave Me Alone, right? Punk Jump Up. I mean, my dude, I still listen to Punk's Jump Up to this day. My only beef with that album was the the the, the album version wasn't the video version. It wasn't, yeah. Yeah, yeah, that's probably I mean, but I mean it's still technically the same song. Yeah, the but. Video, I know you're saying the video was the, the other joint with the, the beat and all that right. with the pop. The, and joint, and that. the remix. The remix was doper. Well, you know, again, back then, having studied and all that, and I actually knew Sadat from way back because I used to mess with his young his sister in high school a little bit. So, you know, I had a certain, I ain't going to lie, I had a certain bias or affinity for them and wanting, wanting to see them shine also because they was God Body. And that album was heavy, heavy God Body centric. I mean, we had songs, Ain't No Mystery, Alon Justice, The Gods, 
you know what I mean, where they was a lot of walk ball, where they was getting straight into the lessons and letting you know on equivalently we go about it. And but at the same time, doing songs like Punk Jump Up, where they keeping it like they don't get it twisted. Because you know, on a lot of walk ball, Lord Jamal said a lot. I even go back to last week's show, I had to like stop him and like, whoa, oh damn, Jamal, that's a little he said to get robbed, raped. You get mugged, raped, robbed, and drunk and drug G. Somebody, I'm like, dang, he said rape too. Like, damn. <laughs> <laughs> like, whoa, come on, Jim. I mean, I get the premise of what he's saying. Like, I'm gonna get you so bad, it's gonna. Feel, I'm hoping it's, you're gonna feel like you getting raped. You know what I'm saying? But right. But it was one of them lines that we talked about last week that I had to pause. Like, damn, I just let that joint slide back in the days. Like, it's all good. But now, like, I'm listening to it. Like, ooh, that might have. He might have crossed the line. I ain't ready to go with him on right there, but. Getting back to my point, though, that album, it, it was dope to me because it solidified them two cats that they could do it without Pooh You know what I'm saying? They could still be dope and still be relevant. Because that album, was, it was a classic. I remember banging it. I mean, maybe because I was, you know, studying the lessons and all that, that, you know, it meant so more to me. But like I said, those two joints, Love Me or Leave Me Alone and the remix to Punk's Jump Up, man, them joints was classic, yo. I love them, too. Yeah, it's funny. When the album dropped, uh, uh, I think... I was, you know, you know Pooba ain't going to be there, yeah. but it really don't hit you. It was one of them albums that I learned to appreciate later. Like, when it dropped, it was like I wasn't in love with the production like I was with One For All and Pooba. I mean, that's a huge, that's that's like, you know, that's a huge thing to follow, you know. It's like losing your top scorer or something. Right. It's like losing it into the playoffs and the finals or something. Right. But I mean, looking back on the album now, even a couple of years after it dropped, I was like, yo, I rock with it. But again, it's that anticipation. You yeah. know, it's kind of like how I said, I always tell people like, if you out dinner, out at dinner and you ask for a Sprite and the way to bring you water, there ain't really nothing wrong with the water, but you really had your, your, your mouth set on that Sprite. <laughs> you know what I mean? So it's kind of just like, that's what it was. Even though I knew Pooba wasn't going to be there, it was still like, damn, I really miss Pooba. <laughs> you know what I mean? But it was, I, it was, it was kind of surprising because I had the same thing. Like I, I, I expected not so good because Google wasn't there, but the album actually did like it did do itself justice. Like they did do like a well, a well deserved project. You know, they put it together well, and it was just it was just dope. It was dope. And for me, it was like it, it, it kind of like. I kind of got hyped because we got Punk Jump Up, and then you got Pooba coming back with 360. It was like, yo, these cats about to go at each other's neck. Like, oh, it's about to get serious. I mean, not like to the point of it's physical, but just like lyrical. Like, yo, this this is like. This but is Ab, like, on cool. that note, did did they ever take shots at each other? Well, I mean, you know, to me, I, I, I thought 360 was about you know. I was say, I think Pooba took shots. I, yeah. I, I mean, punks jump up. I always thought they was talking about poo, but I could be wrong. I don't yeah, know. I think they were just talking about because I know they said again. I think some of what happened with them cats um, was like cats because at that time you did have gangster rap was starting to make a, a name for some coming out a name for itself coming out of Cali because of like N.W.A. and stuff like that. Mm -hmm. so that was like when that era of hip hop where dudes artists would go on tour and get tested. You know what I mean? In some areas. Cats want to fight him and test him and all that. So I think that was like, I think some people outside of our area, you know, New York, Philly, Jersey, you know, the Northeast, misinterpreted them being like God body, like they was all intelligent, conscious rappers and they saw. So they was letting cats know like, yo, I might be God body, but don't get it twisted. I'm knocking nigga head out. You know what I'm saying? Part of my friends. Right. But I think, I don't think they ever took shots at, at Poobah because... I mean, from yeah, my understanding, I think Puba did take one or two shots at Jamal because I know, from what I understand, that was the crux of their problems was really Puba and Jamal. Really? And so I never know what the what the what the actual the the, the reason why they broke. I think um, it, I think it was it was more about things. I think Puba was like you know they all guard body, but Puba was the type of dude that could do the guard body stuff, but then come back with. You know, something like what's the four one one with Mary J. Right, know? right, right, right. Or like the three sixty joint, you know, just a song that was away from all the God body talk, but whereas Jamal wanted to keep it like yo, we're brand new in and you know, we're supposed to be repping the lessons and God body this and that. Because you remember before he was Sadat, he was Derek X. So Sadat yeah. was still he had just started studying from my understanding. You know what I'm saying? And 
Poobah was really the one that put the group together because she was making beats. Because Poo was older than them dudes, right? Yeah, yeah, he was making beats. I remember he had been in the group Master Ceremonies, so we had that under his belt, having been touring and being out there and having records out and knowing all that side of the industry and whatnot. So he basically took them because he was now living in New Road, New Rochelle, and he had he had Sadat and he had Jamal. They was trying to do their thing, so he took them. And originally, from my understanding, Pooba was never supposed to be in Brand Newbie, but it became a thing where they couldn't get a deal unless Pooba was in Brand Newbie, supposedly. Mm -hmm. that the, the label was like, well, Electra was like, we'll take y'all, but Pooba got to be in the group. So you know, there's some who say that that got to Pooba's head or whatever. Pooba's a he's a he's a different dude man. <laughs> for the times a couple times I ran into him, he's definitely a different dude he got his own way of doing things and seeing things but it's a shame because I love to see them still doing hot joints because you know, they did with the um what was it the album uh, with the peace symbol on it that was a joint uh, um, I know what you're talking about I got it right here my song, I love her hey, the foundation, foundation joint foundation my brother foundation, foundation. You know what I mean? And it was like they was always supposed to get back with, and that was dope album to me too, the, the, the foundation. But, you know, it was never the same, man. It was never the same for them cats, man. Right. I think that's one of the biggest things, uh, you know, of, of, of groups breaking up. By the time they get back together, it's kind of like it's, it's too far yeah, gone. Yeah, it's you too know, far like, gone. Yeah. Cats don't care no more. But, um, yo, Ev, how, how many have you named so far, big? Five. Yeah, I got five. You've done your five. Five, yeah. And what was yours? They were Diamond D. Nah, yours was Wyclef, Black Moon, There's a Dark Side, Fish Scale, and what else? Um, Equinox. Equinox. Yeah. Equinox. See, I remember. <laughs> that album or? <laughs> and B, so what was your joints? Too, you you had the back. Diamond D, the Stunts Blunts, the Ghost Dini, the Marley, 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 Trust. And, um, yeah, Ghost, Molly, Brand New, and um, Stunts Blunts. And there was something else. Oh, EPMD. 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 All right. So I, I got, got one more, though. Huh? I got one more. Good, 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 good. Because we got time. Okay. My first joint up, most people will agree with this. It's kind of like a tie. But this, I'll let this it. I'll, 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 this, this is your fifth, right? This is my fifth. Okay. I'm going to just let this next one go because I want to just mess up Bezo head with my, 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 my honorable mention joint. Uh -oh. This is gonna kill him. I can't wait. You, Ab, you thought it was bad during the MC show. I don't know what this is gonna do <laughs> right now. But um, my fifth joint is Pete Rock Soul Survivor. Classic. Oh, yeah. But see, the funny thing is, yeah. a lot of people, a lot of people, don't. Nah, you know, I'm it. I'm sorry that I'm, I didn't think of that joint but as a classic. A oh, lot. Man, of, I didn't mention it just because I don't want to seem biased and what <laughs> coming from the Vernon, but yeah, a lot of people classic. don't look at this as a classic album. Really? I mean, that's they, a, yeah, that's that's a good reason why. Because I figured, yo, that's that's just a ill. Everybody know really? that. Oh my nah, god. Yeah. Nah, I, I, again, I talked to a lot of cats, and they're like, Shame. you know, I ain't really rock with it. That but I felt mean, like, wait, kill. Hold up. Did they give you a reason why they don't rock? Yeah, that's it? crazy. Um. Not really. Just on some old, like, yo, it was, you know, number one, I don't know if a lot of people heard the joint. Because number one, you got to remember, if you're not, I think for producer dudes, we listen to music differently. Right. So when Pete and CL broke up, right. if the average hip hop dude is a, a Pete and CL fan, that's where it may stay at. It may not follow on to now the producer's trying to do his own thing, you know, type right. thing. So I know a lot of people probably haven't heard this album and that's one of the things whenever I'm polling hip hop with people it's like have you heard it like me I'm not a big Pac fan at all I have never heard a complete Tupac album I have heard singles I've heard songs so I never really get in, get into it with somebody when people are saying Pac is their number one because I've never I can't hold you I've never even heard the album so I'm yeah. able to admit that there are a lot of people who poly hip hop and debate with you and have never even heard an album of the person they just heard the songs or the singles or a song here and there so that's why i really can't beef with people when they say pocket number one i've never heard a pocket album he he possibly could be number one i doubt it but well, we're gonna turn this to something else man go, go right so let's but, just, i just want to i want to comment on that because the thing with soul survivor is kind of crazy this was the album that got pete rock his notoriety you know, this this is what put Pete Rock out there as a person to put out albums. And see, I don't. It's not crazy that Cassidy. 
I don't think this is where you guys know the riot. Yeah, I think that guy is no riot. Yeah, back. I mean, no, 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 no. I'm talking about as a solo artist, like on his solo. Oh, okay. Just, oh, okay. Know, being known as Pete I mean, Rock. He had, he had, he had, he had features on there too, though. I mean, yeah. that's why I don't understand how cats wouldn't think that. I mean, he had features from like you know uh, Mans and whatnot, and and, and Wu Tang Cats, Rain Ghost, and and, and yeah. Prodigy was on there to. Loose Ends was on that joint, man. Uh, Corrupt was on there. Yeah, I think the dopest thing for me was, to me, this was kind of Pete changing his vibe. Because for me, I used to always say, yo, I like Pete. Um, similar to Ev with me and you would talk about with Dilla, kind of like, I, I like JD, but I always felt like he could only make beats for these type of people. He could only make beats for Bezos Howard MCs, the, the, the MCs with dreads and incense and, you know. <laughs> Damn. You know, I felt like he could only make beats for the Q-tips and the Talibs and them and all that. And then when he became Dilla, it was like, wow, now he can make joints for Ghostface and, and Raekwon. And that's what I, when I first heard about Pete making his album, I was looking at the track list and then hearing the names. I'm like, I can't, you know, Pete was so laid back back in, in the CL Smooth days that I couldn't see him doing a joint for Ghostface. Or I couldn't see him doing a joint for you know Raekwon but then when I heard this it was just like it just took my level of um of, of Pete up to another level um my only knock only knock was that I kind of felt like he was biting Primo a little bit Ooh. Mm. Ooh. like when you listen Back to true, when you listen to True Master listen to the instrumental of True Master yeah, I know a little that. weird the little yeah, huh? Yeah, you're right. The yeah, little yeah, weird yeah, noise yeah. every eight bars. It was, yeah, it, it was even when he did the joint for All City. If you remember, All City's 12 inch had side, side. right the actual Ooh. and the priceless and the, the All City. Man, that's Kill, I'm like, glad you brought that song up, Kill. That yo, yeah. the actual yo. Yeah. Oh my that's god, I'm still listening to that to this day, man. That track is, and it's just, uh, 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 it's just Primo right. taking the sound with the drums. And them dudes flow, man. That's hip hop, my dude. Yo, can you send me that? I need that, actually. Yeah, yeah. I got you. I got you. I had that vinyl. So that was the only thing. And Bezo, I can't remember. We may have been together over when you and Shy used to rest over there. Um, when we heard the Militia, the Pete Rock remix. Cat mm-hmm. thought Primo did that, Joe. Now, I can't remember if I was with y'all, but I was either at the radio station. I was with some, so some hip hop dudes. And... I remember hearing that remix and people was like, oh, that's Primo. And it was like looking at the vinyls like, nah, Pete did this. So, you know, that was my only knock on it. It was a little Primo-ish. But other than that, Love Soul Survivor, great album. It's um, an incredible album. I mean, God. see, again, I, I honestly tried to stay away from mentioning Pete. I was going to name that album, but I was actually going to name their first EP. Right. Um, yeah. You know, a couple of Mecca and the Soul Brothers song, Mecca and the Soul Brothers. A lot of yeah. cats forget about that track. They yeah. hear the album, they just they think of. But I didn't want to be too biased because it's coming from the burning. But I mean, it's like for me with Pete, man. I mean, I seen this dude, you know, go from being just a DJ cat because he was over at Eddie F's crib. A lot of the same time, I used to go around Eddie F's crib, you know, from Heavy Dinner Boys and he- Eddie in Westchester County in New York. Eddie F. Any party that Eddie F did, you went to. When Eddie had to retire from doing parties because they was touring and all that for Hev, he put Pete in his in his place, and Pete became the go-to DJ for the Bronx and Westchester. Any Pete Rock party, you was there. And it was like I can remember seeing Pete getting better and better just on the DJing side. And then the first time I went to his crib, because I had and I had no equipment, but I had samples I wanted to use. And Eddie was now too busy, so he sent me to Pete. You know what I mean? He was like, yo, go by Pete Rock Crib. So I went by there. I didn't even have the sample, the record that I wanted to sample. I just knew the song. And I'm about to call Pete and ask him, yo, you got this song? Uh, I don't know the name of it, how it go. And I just over the phone like, <laughs> made the sound. He was like, yeah, I got that. I see it, but then there's these horns that go, nah, nah, nah. yeah, I got that. Y'all went to the crib, and I kid you not, you walk in, he had like thousands of 45s stacked up, thousands. I'm not even exaggerating, thousands on the vestibule, on the front porch of their crib. He had turned him and him and Greg's little brother, his little brother's bedroom, into his record st- stash spot. I asked him for another track, like, yo, you got this? He's like, yeah, come upstairs. We went upstairs into the room. It was a bunk bed, a dresser, and records. This cat walked straight up to the bed, the top of the bunk bed, lifted up like three records and pulled it off like, here you go, this one. 
damn. So not only did he have all these records, but Peace, yo, his mind was so in tune with every single record and sound. I, I hit him up like last year, like, yo, P, I'm looking for this this joint. I don't remember what song it's off. It's just a dude saying something that was using a couple of hip hop songs. Hit me back in five minutes. Yeah, that's all for the uh, Watch Stacks album, no doubt. What's the name? That's that so and so, yeah. It's right there on, on the side B of the first album. Like, so for me, when it came to Pete, I never, like what you were saying, killed about, you know, sounding like Primo, this and that. I mean, yeah, that's when I had the bias comes in because my love for knowing how this cat does his thing, man, and it's so thorough and so on point that I just had so much respect. I probably didn't even notice that. I, mean, I probably never even seen that because it's like, it's almost like somebody talking about your, your kin, your family, like you don't see it until, you know, it's in your face. And right. I just didn't see it. You know what I mean? And I, now that you mention it, I do know that the remix of the militia was very primo esque. So right. I could see that, but I, I just didn't hold that against him. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Still salute to him. But I mean, what I loved about the album and 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 because I know a lot of people say Marley's is the best produced album. I feel like this joint is. Um just for the simple fact that he went all over. I mean he had MC eight on. You know what I mean? And like you said, he had loose ends and you know, Miss Jones, Miss you Jones, know. Yeah, that was two of my favorite joints on that album, too. Yeah, yeah. I mean, yeah. Beanie Man, OC, Raekwon, Prodigy, Ghost, Lord Tariq, Peter Guns, Cool G yeah. Rap, and Lord Professor, Black Thought, Robbo. Yeah, I mean, I mean. I'm mean, that you're saying some cats didn't see that as a, like, how, what? With all again, them I just don't think a lot of people heard it, B. I really honestly think that a lot of people haven't really heard this album as, as, on a whole. You know what I mean? Oh, that's, that's that's sad. Like that's one that you definitely to me, any anybody, you in hip hop, any at any point, you need to listen to that album. That's like it, it just it I don't know, that was that's I mean, a, like a breakthrough type joint, man. You know what's funny, cause like talking to one of my mans about the Magna Carta, the one thing he tried to he said that I, I did agree with, I understand where he's coming from. Was like what Jay tried to do was have something for everybody. So he got you know, he got some hip hop real hip hop joints on there. He got that trap music stuff and all that for them, that crowd. He got something for everybody, whether right. you like it or not. Now, I don't necessarily care for the in-between songs or whatever. I only really rock with the songs that, you know, my type of hip hop. But what Pete did with that album, to have MC8, Loose Ends, I mean, all them names you just named, he has something for every type of hip hop head. And even like, like I say, man, I mean, I, to me, you can't underscore the importance of your fan base, man. And like it or not, back then in the hip hop, the ones who bought most of the records was the chicks. Right. Well, if you couldn't get the chicks to buy your music, you, you might have been a dope artist in the street, but you know, cats is going to go burn a tape from their man's house. They're not going to buy it. You know what I mean? They'll go to the show and just watch what chicks will get into it. So to have Loose Ends and Miss Jones on there, man, that's like, that's creativity, my man. I mean, that's, come on. Yeah, I was cast out rocking with that. Yeah, that's crazy. Salute to Pete on that. All yeah. right, Ev, what's your honorable mention joint? All right, I got to pick one, man, and I'm stuck. Um, I think I'm going to go with The Shining, though. Smith & Wesson. I think I'm going to go with The Shining uh, because, again, that's another, like, classic album it was to me was the you know as far as that whole boot camp click um it was the 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 the, the second classic that came out of that group of people and i think it was just like from top to bottom it was just like a, a well done well produced um beat miners or some of the dopest stuff um of course i'm a big steel fan so i think you know just a big smith and wesson fan regardless but i think you know lyric wise it just had everything that i was looking for um you know, from PNC to Soundboy Burial to Bucktown, you know, to One Time, I was just it was just it was it was dirt. It was just like the definition of dirt, and yeah, it was done well. I think the craziest thing about that album, man, I feel like the B minors just really caught their groove with that album. Yeah, you yeah. know, like that was when you know into the stage was like step one, but when they came to the shine, and it was just like them dudes had it. like they would just. They would just click in and like you said, tech and still with I, I'll never forget, man, we were at Morgan at the time when it's dropped and the source gave it a three and a half. And I just yeah, remember, I remember that. Yeah, just I remember being, having a convo with Sean. I remember like, oh, everybody just being wow. livid. Like, yo, how was this joint not five mics? Like who exactly. I remember looking at the dude's name, like, all right, man, screw you on all right, I ain't read none of your articles no, no more. Exactly. You obviously don't know 
with Great the hell you're talking. I think that was the first time that I had ever been enraged about a sources <laughs> rating to get that album a three and a half because that's that was, that was a follow blast kill. Who was it? Who was it? <laughs> <laughs> what happened? <laughs> what happened? Who was blast? Who wrote that article? I Scott? forgot, B. I forgot. I <laughs> forgot. Yeah, but you don't hear no more after that. Like, <laughs> yeah, it was like, yo, dog, you're fired. Like, I felt like if anybody, because that was back in the days when Cash was getting beat down over, over, you know, ratings and things like that. Yeah. That was the one who deserved a beat down, beat down, because <laughs> that was, that was. I don't even understand how you get that three and a half mics. That's a five mic album easily. Yeah, Sound Boy Burial is in my top at least. I would be generous to say 15 greatest hip hop songs for me. Yeah, that's the, the, the album version or the video? The version? remix version. I love yeah. the remix boom, version. Boom, Still boom, 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 boom. That joint. I don't know. I don't remember that's the remix version, whatever. That version of that song with that bass and the drums is just. See, that's the type of hip hop I love, man. Just some hard ass drums, some hard ass sounds or whatever it is. And yeah. Cash just spitting, man. And with what the, I loved about them dudes, they always had that reggae influence. Yeah, yeah it was hard. They did, they did mm-hmm. it. The videos reflected it. It was funny. And that's what I loved. The, the thing I loved about the whole boot camp clique is they were Brooklyn. You know, when yeah, I look at my people from say. Brooklyn, you know, Haitians, that's just say, yo. just that that reggae flavor, that flair. Mm-hmm. Boot camp just. They were from Brooklyn. There was no misconception. Yo, where right. they from? Yeah. Are they from Queens? Are they from? You knew as soon as them dudes opened their mouth without even having the name of Avenue anywhere, Franklin Ave Posse or anything. Exactly. They were you, and you didn't have to be from New York to know that either. Right. That's what I'm saying. It's like that's what I was about to say, Kyoto. It's like, like I was saying before about the end of the stage album, how it got Brooklyn heads that was straight reggae rockers heads didn't even mess with hip. They was like second or third in their pecking order. Where all of a sudden now they're hip hop heads because of Black Moon and that album, and that's why that song, because a lot of the dudes I was running with in Morgan was, you know, their family was Caribbean, you know, like Sha, my man Mark, my other man Dave, you know, they all they family from J A Saint Croix Saint Thomas, right? So they would hear these hip hop songs with that had like a reggae sound to it, but if the reggae dude sounded fraudulent, cast it like, oh man, that's nonsense, so. I had the same attitude. Like I don't even remember that movie, The Mighty Quinn, Robert Townsend and Denzel I Washington. It, I, I, I ain't really watch it like that. It exactly. It's like cats that I knew that was reggae. Like they were insulted by that. They have all these non, these Jamaican cats, fake ass Jamaican dudes doing Jamaican accents. But that sound boy burial, yo, the reggae dude on there. I mean, come on, son. No. <laughs> it sounded like they exactly. recorded that in Jamaican Kingston yeah, somewhere. Bro. And the video for it. The video was just like, yo, it was just like you was at Carnival or something. That's what I'm saying. But that's that Brooklyn reggae hip-hop sound. And that's why I always loved about Black Moon and that whole clique. That they knew, same thing with, with KRS. You know, they knew how to tap into the reggae sound mm-hmm. and bring it into hip-hop. And it be authentic, not be like some hybrid, bastardized, offshoot. Right. Like, oh, I can't, you know, <laughs> I can't take bastardized. it. Word up. I can't, I can't take it, man. It's fake, man. It's somebody that heard some dude talking Jamaican trying to sound Jamaican doing impersonation. Right. I want the real thing, man. All right, B, you got anything else on tap? I mean, I, I got one, but I'm, a, I'm like I told you before, Kyle. I gotta, I gotta give you a, a little disclaimer that All right. when I say it, y'all gonna look like oh, that's already a classic. What is he talking about? But I'm gonna say Illmatic. And the reason I say that, and again, I know that's you right. You right. We are, we are looking at you like what was the show about albums that aren't classic. The number one classic. The number one, one, classic, the the number one classic. Exactly. But I'm gonna take it someplace that I think not everybody would take it. Okay. It, so a lot of cats would say it's one of the greatest, if not greatest, hip hop albums ever. Okay. But to me, for me personally, it's one of the greatest albums in music. In the history of American music, and music I listened to in my 42 years, it's one of the greatest albums of any genre of music ever. Between the production, in terms of who produced what, the the, the, the urban legends behind, you know, how it was put together. You know, it, to have a cat like Lars Professor do the more commercialized some of the weaker songs, he had his man L.E.S., but I don't really count L.E.S. That was his people putting some monies in his pocket or whatever. But when you look at Large Pro's joint, the album cut, and then when he did the remix with the Nas, it's like, 
And I gotta say this for people that don't know, that sample when it's like not nah, not nah, Nas is the king of disco. A lot of cats don't realize that that was from Bismarck. He when Bismarck's line was, "I'm highly recognized as the king of disco." But Lost Professor took that from Nas is the king of disco. When he took what a dude said and he just changed and, and totally changed what he said by the way he put that sample in there. And it's things like that that, that again, album cover. One of the greatest album covers ever for me. It started a trend. You know, you had Biggie biting that off of the first Biggie album with the picture of the baby on the cover. You know what I mean? You had a lot of cats, Lil Wayne tried to do the same thing with one of his album covers. We had a picture of, I don't know if it's his baby or him as a baby or whatever. That album from top to bottom, for me, is one of the greatest hip hop albums, in, pardon me, greatest albums in music history. Ever. It's there. Wait, I'm still I'm still confused as far as how does that fit in the category? It does. Like I said, a lot of hip hop cats would just say it's a classic. It's the great it's the best hip hop album. Because I've had I've gotten into arguments with cats, older cats like mine that be like, yeah, oh, but you're going too far. You're going too far. I'm like, fam, I'll put that joint up to next to Purple Rain. I'll put it up next to Souls in the Key of Life. I put it up against any of the greatest music albums I've heard. I put okay. it up next to Coltrane, son. So you're saying dramatic? I'm, a, I'm just gonna go down this path with you for a quick second because I know we we going. Yeah, we, we, let's go. This, I just want to be a whole other show. Saying. This may be a whole other show. You're just saying that Illmatic is the greatest out, a greatest American album. You know, I say it's one though. I put it in my top five greatest albums in the history of music. Yes. History of music, world, or just American? Just, I mean, whatever. I mean, I could, there's some, you know, good world, man. <laughs> but yeah, man, in the history of music, in the history of recorded music and albums that are put out, you know what I mean, since they taught, started keeping track of music like that, yo, Illmatic <laughs> is in there. It's in my top five. It's like Songs in the Key of Life, Purple Rain, Illmatic, and then some other joints. Yeah, I ain't I'm, thinking I'm, I'm not mad. I'm not mad at that. I, I, I feel that, but I'm still like, so how does that work when the guy line work? Like I said, I mean, maybe it's because the person with my experience. I've said that before the cast, and they look at me like I'm crazy. Like, okay, whoa, whoa, whoa. No, 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 I'm not even questioning that. I'm with you. No, 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 I think, I'm but I think the same way how I was like, yo, how how we been? It's like yo, how would cats not like Pete Rock? So I see what you're saying, B. You know what I mean? I mean how people everything about that album when it came out, the production. I mean, I, I, yeah, I know I had to sold y'all say on how dope the album is. No, it's a, it's a classic. It's a yeah. classic. Uh -huh. When you think, I think that's what I mean. I think it's the it's also the most important and maybe the most important hip hop album ever because of that, because it took the old genre of hip hop. And combined it and and catapulted it to the next level with the Biggies and the Jay Zs and where rap is going. I can say this: I give it's one of them. It's one of them. I can't say it's D. Yes, I mean it's, it's hard to say it's not D because it takes a nation. It's still yeah, it takes a nation is there. You, have to, you know, I'm talking about, but again, it, it takes a nation. But think about it: it takes a nation holds up its place because of what it meant in terms of the social consciousness. In terms of you know how dope a group it was and, and that, you know all that type of stuff. Right. I talk about Illmatic, and why I think it might be the most important album ever is because the way Cash was was starting to do music, starting to do albums, it was like Cash was. If you think back to hip hop back then, it was a lot of that gangster rap. Right. And New York especially was dying for a big for one of the top artists because like N.W.A. and them cats had. It started taking over, you know what I mean? A lot of that West Coast stuff was starting to get a lot of shine, and even some of the Dirty South shit. So when that, when Illmatic came out, it reminded everybody, because I still remember the source, they had a cover, and they called him the next coming. Right. They basically talking about the next coming of Rock Kim type thing. And you know, all the six degrees of separation, how Jay came out of Big Daddy Kane's camp, and Nas came out of, you know, Rock Kim and G-Rap with Lost Professor, that whole camp. And you know, it's just like everything about it. It's like, and then for Jay and Nas to end up battling, it, it was almost like the battle that never happened between Kane and Rock Kim. You got a chance to see it because right. it's, it's almost like they're two proteges, even though Jay and Kane are about the same age. It's almost like they're two proteges took the took the battle that them two never did. 
Right. And that's I, I don't think that's any of that would have happened if Illmatic didn't come out. That's a good point. So, All right. So, we we got to hold, hold tight up. Hold tight up. Hold tight. <laughs> we we, we going to get ready to end. I got one more left for y'all. This is going to kill Bezo. It kills everybody when I say this, but it's gonna especially kill Bezo. So I've been holding right. this one in the chamber right here. My honorable mention. Yes, I'm saying it. It's a not be called nigga. No. <laughs> <laughs> no. <laughs> not at all. My five mic banger here. Joe Buttons. Move music four. <laughs> Move <laughs> music four. <laughs> Y'all can get up. Y'all can walk away. What? You make faces. Not, wait, wait, so wait. I just want to be clear on something. We're ending this show <laughs> where, <laughs> when, I just want to be clear, because we're ending this show, whereas we're supposed to bring the albums that are not already classics with the number one classic album of all time uh, and Joe Budden. Wait, <laughs> wait a second. Well, number one, you know nobody, you I'm not about Illmatic. Illmatic. Stop, hold tight. Yeah, you know nobody, you just did. Nobody thought Bezo was going to talk about Illmatic. Let's start right there. So you but can't that's what I'm blame saying. Like, no, no, I'm saying Illmatic. No, I'm with saying Joe according to the, to the guy. No, no, no. I'm saying according to the guidelines. Right. With not albums that are already classic. Bezo says the number one classic album of a hip hop album of all time. That's mm-hmm. one of the ones. And then you go, Joe Budden. <laughs> that's what we doing. That's how we this, right? <laughs> Let me explain something to y'all. This is what we just. What did we just talk about? What did we just talk about? Uh, Have any one of you two heard this album before? It's Joe Button, man. It doesn't matter. Answer the question. Have you heard this album before, Ev? You know what? I'm not what a fan. I, I didn't like the single. So is that the one with that that song? Um, the, his biggest single, uh, I forget the name of it. Nah, nah, nah. This was this was one of his. This this album came out in 2010. Okay. Oh, I know. Like, Let me tell y'all something. Let me tell y'all a quick Joe Button story because okay. I can understand. I understand Bezo feels this way for another reason. Ev, I can understand how you feel because what happened was in 2009. Mm-hmm. Me and my peoples went to a MOP Joe Button terminology Big Shook show. Right. So I go here. I'm hyped to see MOP. That's all I care about. And these two dudes are hype as hell for Joe Button. And I'm like, Joe Button, that pump it up, nigga, that whack dude. And they're like, yo, kill. You ha- have you heard his mixtapes? And I'm like, nah, I don't want to hear his mixtapes. Dude is whack. They was like, yo, kill. Trust me, dude is a problem. We go in the show. Terminology and Big Sugar is like 10 people in this show. It's all right. When Joe Button hit the stage, I swear to you, magically, like 400 people appear from nowhere. And 400 people knew every Joe Button lyric that he spit for like his 45 minute set. It was the first time in hip hop history that I felt left out of something. My, my niggas left the show horse. I can't even tell you the last time I've seen people leave a hip-hop show course that night i said i'm obviously missing something i went home downloaded all his mixtapes joe buttons is a problem okay what's the name what's the name of the album what's the name of the album these are he's he's a problem all right (laughs) it's called mood music four so he has a mixtape series called mood music and this was the last one out of the series the reason why I love this album, the reason why I love Joe is because when we talk about MCs who just glamorize stuff, that's not Joe. Joe lets you into his real life. Joe lets you know about his struggles. Joe lets you know about how his how his girl got how he got to deal with his his girlfriend's son and how he got to deal with the baby pop and Joe Buttons lets you into real life. I mean, he has a lyric not on here, but he says something like. My car is messed up. You spend more time, more money fixing it than you spent trying to get it. To me, Joe Button is the working man's MC. So I understand how everybody could think of Joe Buttons and just come to mind and say, pump it up. I feel you. I was the same exact way. But when you really sit back and you listen to this album, if you want some grown man, adult, contemporary hip hop where it's not about guns, it ain't about killing, it ain't about robbing, it's just a dude talking about relationships, a dude talking about 
his, you know, his mom's got cancer. You know, you want some real grown man hip hop? This is the album. This is the album. I'm telling you, I could listen to this album every day on repeat. Lyrically, he kills it. Before y'all judge Joe. Nah, nah. You know what? You know what? You did it. I don't don't know what happened, man, from the first show to now. I don't know how they got y'all numbers or email addresses, but (laughs) you selling Joe Button. My man selling Ghostini. I got to listen to him now. I'm going to listen to him because y'all did a good job of presenting it to me, and this is what the show is about. I don't have that one. I don't even see it. I don't know how to find it. You got it. Can I will I, I will send it to you. Okay. I will send it to you. And you, you know send it to me, Phil. And you I know I will send it to you, <laughs> you send it to me. And you know what? I'm you actually you know how we got Bezo, say what you want to say, because I want to end the show with some controversy like my man Ev would want. So say what you say what you want about Joe. Well here's my thing. Like I'm not gonna get into all the specifics that me and you kill talked about right. or whatever. But I, I will say this. Like what you just said about him, um, his content or whatever, in terms of trying to, you know, I'll say trying, but trying to come off as the working man's MC. See, it's like that's from what I've seen and what I know of the cat, that's because he know that's the only lane he could fit in. So he going to stay in that lane. Let me be the dude that the average person can relate to because he can't play that part of that other dude. Even though he tried to act like it at first. And see, part of it too for me was, like I said, I was telling you, Killer, he used to host the morning show Hot 97 here after that Pump It Up song came out. And I was like, I was working with this producer cat, who I'm going to remain nameless. And I was giving him samples and stuff, and him, you know, doing some ghost production work with him and whatnot. And one of the first things he said to me is like, yo, I, I need a sample like that, that Pump It Up Joe Button song. I was like, what? Joe Button song? That song? Like, it's all right. all right, all right, whatever. I gave him a couple of joints here and there. And after I gave him that, he realized, like, the song is like, yeah, I can't rock with this dude, whatever, whatever. But my whole point is that Joe is the type of dude, man, that it's like he going to do what he got to do to stay relevant. And he know he can't do that other stuff. And I'm not saying he should if he isn't that dude. You know, he shouldn't be out here talking about, you know, being a tough guy and all this and that. But I think his his reality got checked when he tried to step out of his lane for the first time and talk about Method Man. And well, hold, tight, about hold, tight, hold, tight. hold tight. The whole thing with the meth thing is, to be honest, is literally what we're doing right now. The video is of him looking well, at the MC listing, saying, how is how am I not better than meth? You yeah, know what I mean? Yeah. So I don't think he got out of line like, yo, fuck Method Man or nothing like no, that. No, I'm not saying he did. I'm, I'm not saying he did. My point is, though, is that he needs to understand, my dude, the reason you're not in that list is because you don't belong in that list, list, my dude. So don't get mad at Meth. For Meth is just like, I'm not even going to pay you the time of day to talk about no rhyme. I'm like, dude, I'll just smack the shit out of you. Don't worry about the rhyme, man. I'm not that dude, man. But see, that, but then the, the hard part of that is, is now, see, that that's the opinionated part because to me, Joe Buttons, Deserves to be on that list. Yeah, that's and the thing I mean, is, I've honestly yeah. the stuff I've heard. Granted, I never heard that whole joint. Right, and that's why I'm saying I'm gonna hook y'all both up because no, no, no. I've done this before. You don't have to do that. You I, I've converted that. folk before. <laughs> this is the <this laughs> <is a> conversion <laughs> that has happened <laughs> to many folk. Because I've I, 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 I converted, I converted, I converted lots of people who were right where both of you are. I give a move music for and my best of Joe Buttons and bet money. Every single person, I don't know about you, Bezo, but every single person outside of Bezo has come back and said, Yo, Kill, you know what? You was right. This dude is a prop. I mean, don't get me wrong, fam. I have listened to, I've had, I've gone out of my way to listen to some joints of his because I don't want to be, I don't, I pride myself on being the type of person that whoever it is, even if it's, like I said before, if MC Hammer came out with a banger, I'll listen to it. I'll play it. I'll ride to it. And I've listened to Joe Button songs. I have. I've tried to get into this stuff. And I just walk away feeling like, I don't see, I don't know what it is. Why do cats love this dude, man? I don't see it. I right. just don't see it with that cat, man. And the thing is, Joe <laughs> Buttons, I'm about to end this show with some controversy right now. Oh, boy. Uh, here we go. Time see? is up. Right. Time is up, so we have to say this to the here, next Here you go. Here you go. But this is just how you like it, Ev. I'm about to say something really crazy right now. Oh boy. <laughs> <laughs> oh, but yeah. 
Don't it look, look, look before you say it, it looked like you got your finger on the end button. So you gonna say it and get it going real fast. Because we're out of time this week. Is going <laughs> you have to follow this up. Oh. I've been waiting for a minute to drop this bomb on this show. Trust me, the people who I have converted have come around to my way of seeing things. Joe Button is the best storyteller in hip hop ever. Oh! <laughs> what? Come ever. On. Come on, chill. Live from the hey. writer's bench. Somebody uh, kill. That, that, that show was what? something. I'm your man, kill. Vito uh, and Ebba uh, pissed uh, off right uh, now, so they can't uh, say peace. Uh, uh, I'm gonna say it for them. Uh, peace. I say my, my stomach hurt now, man. <laughs> I can't even go to sleep. I can't. I can't. Thanks sleep. for watching. Oh, Keep it locked for another episode of Live from the Writers Bench. Black blasted the whole. Past show. episodes YouTube.com/slash Live from the Bench. Check us out. Keep it locked. Better than slick.